This is Sins, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite, just continuing Alan's route, as usual. Don't know why I tell you that every time, but I do, and I don't know why I feel the need to say the same thing. Like, I don't know why we say that every time. Like, it's just becoming a thing. Anyway. Phew! That was a nice shower. We then ate breakfast and took a shower together. Oh, that was a nice shower, I bet. <laughs> You're still wet. Uh... I was covered with a towel and hugged from behind. When I tried to look around, he snuck a kiss to my lips. Hmm, if you don't dry yourself, you'll catch a cold. Hmm, I nearly swoon with this kiss. I mean, we're not even actually being kissed, but I bet we're swooning a little. It's sweet and tender, like a real lover's. Ellen's compassionate look and his loving gestures melt away the anxiety I had before breakfast. <laughs> Then I'll wipe you down. Then I'll wipe you down for you. Wipe you down for you. Oh hi, whatever. Thank you. I take the towel and wipe his hair. We wipe each other down and prepare for the day. I mean, I don't think you're gonna get prepared for the day. <laughs> this is gonna spiral out of control here. That was when Alan poked at my back. Do you have an odd scar on your back? Huh? Really? Yeah, here. It was on my back, just above my waist. I had a scar? I didn't know. I can't see it for myself, so I didn't notice. Speaking of scars, you also... Uh... That's when Helen got wobbly and put his hand on the wall. Helen, what's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't eat yesterday, so I guess I am hungry. Oh, I see. We fell asleep yesterday, so he didn't have a chance to eat. I checked the clock and it was still 6 a.m. I have some time before work. Then feed on my dream now. I still have some time before I have to leave. Is that okay? Wasn't that the promise? Incubi have to feed on dreams or they can't live. I believe that I was a, it was a lover's duty to care for the health of their partner. Disapproving of his eating habits was just a result of my ego. I took his hand and laid on the bed. Like a sacrifice to a god, I lie on the altar... Relaxing my entire body, I close my eyes. He's just feeding on your dream. I mean, like, we've done this a million times. Not really. But also, and then we've just had sex, so it's pretty fine if you just eat my dream. I'm in love with you, so, like, it's fine. I feel like if you were dating a vampire. I'm just saying, right? You'd be like, sure, feed on my blood. Sure, whatever. Demon's kiss. Ooh. The next day... I scrolled up accidentally. I thought we'd create a save file in this chapter. Hmm? I was traveling to work with my bicycle. I was influenced by Alan. I haven't really ridden much, but bicycles are in fact convenient. You can go through narrow streets and there are rental bikes all over town. I think it'd be cute to share interests and habits with the person I love. Being influenced by your partner surely is also part of being in love. It's really good exercise, too. Using a bicycle is perfect for traveling from 9th Avenue to 7th Avenue. I'd like to go out and have fun cycling more with Alan. Thinking about that, I continued on towards work, feeling cheerful. Love truly is a wondrous feeling. <sighs> After I watched her go to work, I, re I released a huge sigh. A dream that I fed on last night. And the flavor has changed, and it's even tastier. And maybe it's because I finally kissed her yesterday. Perhaps her love got deeper. The flavor was better than anything I've ever had. And it's getting better day by day. Sheesh. Love getting deeper. What am I thinking? There's no time for this. And because that thing is still... Cupid's bow is still on her as a necklace. Ten years ago, I became a greater demon and read the Book of Vanquishing, learning about the truth. Hmm. It was written that if Cupid fell in love with a human and kissed him, she would lose her divinity and become a full human. Furthermore, if she became a human, then the necklace would come off. It can't be me. Because I'm not a human, I'm a demon. Or could it be because it's a love created by Cupid's arrow? There were too many unknown factors, which is why I held myself back for so long. It was no use. I'm not strong enough. Ugh. Damn it. 
Even though she's so dear to me, I can't be the one. I need to act fast so that she can love a human. And ten more days until the effects of Cupid's arrow disappears. My time spent with her was fun, but now I need to prepare to guide her to a new love when the arrow's effects wear off. She's not interested in the rest of the Parasite Five, but... I need to have her fall in love with Gil at the moment when the effects of the arrow wears off. It'll be fine so long as she's happy with another guy. And denying her that's just selfish on my part. But what's important is for her to be well and live happily. I gave up on all other wishes long ago. And that's why... And that's why I'll find her true love. Before she really thinks that I'm the one for her. You look so sad, sweetie. Stop it, don't. I'm not good enough. Lies, lies, you are. <laughs> well, we have to. Have, we're at the very beginning, and now we're happy and love. The game can't end. We gotta have some kind of tumultuous event. Today, as usual, I was doing my best advising my clients. If you need any advice, please contact me. Yes, if it goes well, I will inform you. I'm glad I discussed with an advisor. You're so much easier to talk to lately. I hope to speak with you again soon. Leave it to me. Like that, work has been going swell today. Swell! Good, good. I have five people getting married this month. My performance has been increasing dramatically and... Miss Mirror, do you have a minute? The guy I talked to you about... I decided to go out with him. Really? Congratulations! I thank you so much. It was all because I asked for your help. I was helping out with my co-worker's love counseling. Surely I'm contributing to the human realm as the real deal Cupid. Which means I should be getting my promotion soon. I can finally convince Dad. Alright, I'm going... I'm going to match make more couples. I rolled up my sleeves and began working. Everything was going so well it was scary. Everything's going so well I can't wait for the game to throw us a curveball As usual Phew, I was able to matchmake many couples today After work I was happily walking down the street I wanted to hurry and visit Alan using the share bicycle But I suddenly had the urge to take it easy To walk in the breeze and indulge in my thoughts There's no need to spend every waking hour with one's partner I wanted to take some time to reflect on today's events Recently, I've been told it's easier to talk to talk to me more so than before. I was also asked for advice from my co-workers. I was being asked for romantic advice much more often than before, thanks to my newfound experience with love. Now that I'm in a relationship myself, people have been appreciating my guidance. I can definitely advise from experience now. Experiencing love oneself is important, even for Cupid. I walk as if I were about to skip. Suddenly, I notice someone familiar. Alan! Hey, oh, what an odd place to meet you. Going home? Yes, how about you, Alan? I just finished delivering some pillows, my darling. As always, he would casually hug me by the shoulders. The old me would have snapped at him for touching me. But now that we're officially lovers, I'm just happy to be with him. How about we have dinner somewhere on 7th Avenue tonight? Uh, you can just have dessert. Great. Let's eat together. Hooray! Let's go! <laughs> Squeezing him close, I look up and secretly beg him for a kiss. Stare at him. Tell him what you want. We have to make our save point. Uh, do, 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 do. This is where we saved everybody out. We're going to start saving Alan up here, I guess. Boop. Whoops. Tell him what you want. Hey, Alan, I want a kiss. Your co-workers could be around to see. Look at him blushing, it's so cute. I don't mind. You're more bold than I thought. Look at happy Alan, it's adorable. He chuckled and gave me a light kiss. Hmm, jeez, which one of us is the demon? <laughs> you, of course. Let's go to Happy Forest Cafe for dinner. I think you'd enjoy their menu. Is that so? I'm looking forward to it, but... 
Holding my hand, Alan smiles innocently. I'll only enjoy it because I get to be with you, my darling. My loving week spent with Alan went by without incident. It's only a few days then. I always thought Vienna coffee was coffee with sausage, but it has cream on top. I like the sourness of it. Like Vienna sausages. <laughs> Alan was lear learning about more and more types of dishes and cuisines. Thanks to this relationship, I was improving as a bridal advisor, and he was able to feed off my tasty dreams. to rush and eat like that. Here, do you have some on your mouth? I'll wipe it for you. I was occupied with both love and work. A truly fulfilling day in Los York. It looks like your work is going well. I can tell you're having fun just listening to you talk about it. I honestly feel as though pricking myself with my own arrow was a good thing. Hmm, do you want this? Even a real demon can't make such a cute, begging face. Maybe you really are a demon, hmm. Besides, if I can keep him with me, then that would safeguard others' relationships. Plus, my experience with him has been improving my counseling. Alright, Bob and Jesse got married. All's going well, it seems. It was another busy day with work and love. I get off early today, and when I do, Alan's going to take me out on a date. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, my interview with Kathy starts at 5.30. I should head over to the meeting room. I packed up my files, stood up, and began walking toward the elevator. It appears Kathy has two people she likes. When I was checking my files, I noticed the president was there, so I bowed quickly. Ah, Mr. Snail, good afternoon. Oh, it's you. The president glanced at me with my files, then made a smile. You've always worked hard, but it seems you're working even harder lately. A word's been reaching my ears. Oh, is that so? Yes, you've been building quite the reputation with the clients. They're saying you've been honest and helpful. I know the situation with the Parasite 5 didn't turn out ideal for your promotion, um, but know that I've been considering it lately. Thank you very much! The elevator going up arrived. Mm, keep up the good work. Anything for you, Shelby. Although your last name is Snail, and that is really fucking awkward, but... Yes! Aye, aye, Captain! The president took the elevator up, leaving me waiting for the elevator down. Yes! Praise and promise of a promotion from the president! I love that. It means my hard work is paying off. I'm so happy. I smile knowing that I'm doing the right thing as Cupid. If I keep it up and get promoted, then I can throw it back at Dad's face! <laughs> then I can go back to Celestia. Huh? Wait, what should I do? If I return to Celestia, I wouldn't be able to see Alan anymore. I don't want that to happen, but maybe I'm only thinking that because of the love caused by Cupid's arrow. When the effects of the arrow wears off, how will I feel then? Would I not care that I won't be able to meet Alan ever again? Or will I not want to leave him and resist going back to Celestia? I pull out my phone and check the calendar. There was only one more week left until the effects of the arrow wears off. What'll I be doing on the last day? Hopefully Alan, but... Huh? <laughs> All of a sudden, the world looked like it doubled. I suddenly lost equilibrium. Which way was up? Which way was down? My controller is vibrating. If I don't hold on to something, I'll fall. But I don't know where the wall is. I can't think straight. You're seeing right through that elevator. She fell! Is she okay? Someone call the ambulance. Hang in there. I can hear people shouting near me. I can no longer stay conscious and, without answering, fell into darkness. can hear sounds. Sounds of rustling and people running. I'm her friend Gil. I'm sorry, but is it true that she collapsed at work? I can hear Gil's voice, but I can't open my eyes. 
Nothing seems to be wrong with her health, but she's not regaining consciousness. The voice sounded like it was fading. What's happening to my body? Is it really Gil, or is it probably Alan pretending to be Gil, so then we'll, like, think, Oh, Gil was there for me! And Gil's gonna be like, I was what? I mean, yes, I was. Because it's Gil. The sounds of cars and people walking were blending together. I couldn't tell how much time had passed. When I woke up, I was in my room. Huh? Shouldn't you be in the hospital? I'm just saying. Oh, Gil is really there. It's Basie. I'm so glad you woke up. Gil? Why are you here? <laughs> Couldn't read it any other way. Lisa. Gil? Why are you here, Gil? The fuck are you doing here? Get the fuck out. I'm just kidding. You collapsed during work. Do you remember? We were so worried. I called Gil over. Claris. I do remember I was fading out during work. My memory cut off at the moment I thought I needed to hold on to something. I didn't think I'd collapse. Sorry for making you worry. Oh, oh, don't worry about that. Are you okay, though? The doctor said there were no issues. I'm okay now. I might have pushed myself too hard at work. I lifted myself up and realized Alan was standing by the wall. He's actually there. Alan, you came. Yeah, I heard you collapsed. He was like, what the fuck? Why would I not? Alan's expression was tense. Approaching the bedside, he looks me straight in the face. And do you remember how you felt when you collapsed? I gasped as he gently cut my cheek in his hand. Even though both Gil and Clarice are here. Um. I was a little puzzled, and that was when Clarice tapped on Gil's shoulder. Gil, let's go. Er, uh, that seems like a good idea. For her. Gil and Clarice then left the room. Once we were alone, I looked over at Alan. He came rushing after hearing I had collapsed. I couldn't help but smile, feeling loved. I know, right? <laughs> it's okay. I was just pushing myself too much. I'm fine now. It might have been because my clients are all getting married lately and I have to process so much paperwork. Even though I laughed, Alan still looked serious. He checked my pulse and placed his hand on my forehead to see if I had a fever. You don't have a fever and your pulse seems to be fine. See, I'm okay, so don't worry. I laughed again and Alan looked annoyed. You may have gotten exhausted because you stayed over at my place. You should rest here tonight. Hmm, but then you won't be able to feed on my dream. And don't worry about that. I'll be okay if I don't eat for one day. But if you don't eat, then won't you collapse too? There was that one night when he didn't eat and had nearly fallen from dizziness. No, oh, that was something else. You know it wasn't. He was like, oh, it's just I didn't eat. Low blood sugar. Yeah. No, because he noticed the scar that we had that he probably has a matching one or some shit. I'm just saying. The angels on the cup. I, there's some, just, just, so all these things, throw all of it at the wall and try to map out which points are connected and which ones are real. But, you know, all these things. I'm just throwing it all out there. I suspected that a single meal for an incubus equaled to roughly three meals worth. Which means if he doesn't eat a dream one night, it's the same as not eating anything all day, which is possible. I'm fine. I can go back to your place. No, both Clarice and Gil are here. In times like this, it's better to stay in human company. I can't properly take care of you. I'm too inexperienced with how fragile the human body is. Alan, it was a desperate voice. I can tell he's seriously worried about me. He really is kind. He worried about my health over his own hunger. He mentioned before that he was nicer than most other demons, and he was right. Different from what I read of an incubi and demons in literature. Alan's too kind for a demon. That's why I think I st I'll still love him, even after my arrow's effects wear off. For what was expected of his nature, he was caring. He even hates how he has to live. That's why I love him. That's why he doesn't, I don't feel like he's was ever, he was born a demon. You know what I mean? He was something else and then, that, like, you know? Alan, can you hug me? Yes. He hugged me with a slight hesitation. A warm happiness. <laughs> I feel relaxed being held by you. I want to be like this forever. 
Hmm. If I'll just grip Titan, surely someone who held me this way wouldn't think of me as just a source of food. I pressed my cheek against his chest and looked up. Helen, I want you to kiss me. If you do, I think it'll make me better. So please. I nearly collapsed so I can ask for this, right? <laughs> like how she's like, it will heal me from my cancer if you kiss me. I mean, I just love the guilt trip. It's cute. He considered my request for a moment and then nodded. He leaned his head forward and kissed me. On my forehead, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not mming, but... I could feel the warmth blossoming in my chest just from the feel of his soft lips. I never thought kissing the person you loved would be so exhilarating, but... I suddenly got dizzy. Watch out! He kept my body from falling. I then realized I nearly collapsed again. <laughs> Sorry, I was just so happy. Maybe my blood pressure's too high. No. Oh. Alan didn't laugh. He was looking at me with tight lips. Could it be... Huh? No, you should go to sleep already. Uh, okay, I think I will. When I laid down on the bed, Alan carefully placed a blanket over me. That's why this is the demon's kiss chapter or whatever. It's, you know... Yeah, his kiss is killing us. Good night, Spacey. That's kind of devastating. We're gonna have to fix this. His voice lulled me to sleep, just like it usually did when he wanted to feed. Good night, Alan. Please feed on my dream. Alan's sorrowful gaze was focused on me. And that's when I fell asleep. But I didn't dream. Even after she went to sleep, I couldn't go away. But I knew I needed to leave. A demon like myself lingering, uh, lingering around her wouldn't be doing her any favors. Even as she slept, she looked pale, and it was obvious she wasn't feeling well. And the reason for her sudden fainting wasn't because of her overworking herself. Her divine powers were weakening. I kissed her and took her purity. And that's why her power as a goddess weakened. Prior to this, there was never any record of a god and a demon mating. And that's why I didn't know. I didn't know that I'd defile her soul. Oh, Can you phrase it like that? It sounds awful. Damn it. I cursed myself and made a hard fist. How despicable I am when all I'm good for is tainting her. Oh, I love how much he hates himself and we're like, sweetie, it's okay, we love you. No matter how much I want to save her, I'm poisoned to her. Kissing her, desiring her, and loving her. I'll only drain her life energy away. If only I weren't a demon. I don't know how many times I wish this. But I am a demon, and that cannot be changed. You don't know that. I mean, I don't think you were one to start. And this is why I should never have touched her. I watched her sleep. Her pale, sleeping face is proof of my sin and inability to risk temptation. I won't let her become fallen. I don't want her to become something that would feed off humans. I don't care what happens to me. I just wanted to protect her. To do that, I'll... No! Break our love. Don't do it! <gasps> Last time we pretend. <laughs> now it's just real. Mm. Huh? Morning already? I woke up feeling everything but refreshed. I had a splitting headache and it took me forever to feel fully awake. I didn't have a dream. Alan was supposed to eat my dream, but maybe he didn't go through with it. I think I recall him saying that he'd be fine going without a meal for a day. Without warning, the door slowly swung open. It's Gil. I looked toward the door, assuming Alan would be standing there, but instead it was Gil who came strolling through. <laughs> I feel like she would be disappointed like I am. A good morning. Happy to see you're awake. I made breakfast for you. God damn it, Gil! It's not even your route! Get out of here! Gil, you stayed for me? 
I, I was worried about you, and I'm desperate. I want you to love me. Stop loving Alan and love me, goddammit! Not your route, Gil! What about Alan? He, he went home, of course. I see. Hmm. Did you wake up? I'm gonna go to work. I'll leave you with Gil, so you rest well today. Clarice popped in for a second and then left, waving her hand. Gil nodded as we watched her go. That's right. You need to rest up. My work's calmed down a bit so I can take care of you all day. And for the rest of your life, you can stay bedridden forever. It's okay. Do you want me to break your legs? Like in misery? And then you can't leave me. What? I'm just saying. I don't hate Gil, but he's also a little fucking creep. Like, he's just the easiest one to fucking make fun of, okay? He's the easiest one just because he's the slight creep, you know? Where you're like, could you just stop being creepy, Gil? Even though your route was good, you're still that character in general that I just... And it's just too easy. It's too easy. Well, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I'm pretty sure I was just tired. And then that means you really need to rest. Don't underestimate fatigue. And now don't leave the bed. I'll bring you your breakfast. He scolded me for my stubbornness and then left the room. He'll always make such a fuss over nothing. Still, I've never collapsed like that before. So I guess I understand why I might be worried. I sighed deeply. My head was pounding. I ached all over, and I was pretty sure I was running a fever. I had no idea goddesses could get so exhausted. Of course, only the DC have divine knowledge about the gods themselves, along with humans. A low-level goddess like me just doesn't just does what she's told. Celestia is almost like one of those awful corporations I've heard about. Here you go. Make sure you eat everything. Gil came in carrying more food than I could possibly handle. <laughs> Gil, there's no way I'll be able to finish all that. Seriously? I just figured that if you had a big breakfast, it would help you get better quicker. Well, I appreciate the thought. I'll eat what I can. He handed me a spoon, and I started off with the chicken noodle soup. Mmm, it's so good. This is exactly what you need when you're not feeling well. It reminded me of that time Gil took care of me the day I was feeling woozy after Clarice and I had gone out the night before. The gentle combination of flavors from the chicken, veggies, and broth started to warm up my insides. Gil went out of his way to come help me. He always listens to what Clarice has to say. He must really like her to value her opinions so highly. Yeah, we're clueless, but I love it. He really is the love lorn parasite, after all. Then, I have to help Gil with his love life. He may not be a member anymore, but he's still my friend. I gently brush my fingers against my cupid's bow pendant. Once I'm promoted and prove myself to Dad, maybe then I can use my bow and arrow to see if this thing still works. Speaking of which, the effects of that arrow should be wearing off soon. Twenty-five days had passed since Alan first ate my dream. Just five more days and I'll be free from my own arrow's power. Thinking about what might happen one day on day 30 made me nervous. Will my feelings toward him disappear? Maybe Cupid, but I don't really know how my powers actually work. Which just says that you weren't really... I mean, we already know you're like the 86th Cupid or whatever it was, so... Eh. You know what I'm saying, though? But you're like, I don't know how my powers work. I don't know, that should have clued you in that something's weird. And then no one will tell you, like... I, I wish I could stay in love with him forever. Feeling love for the first time was such an incredible moment. Will Alan keep feeding on my dreams if I stay in love with him? And will he kiss me? I wish that he would. I wonder where he is right now. I guess he's probably at work. It is business hours, after all. I think I need to get a pillow. I'm just kidding. I need to get better soon so I can go and see him. But I just couldn't shake that drowsy feeling I'd had all morning. No, oh, the rooftop is going to be... Yeah, Alan. I watched her through the window. But instead of going to her, I made my way to the roof of the building. Sorry, I have an ear itch in my ear. Okay. She still hasn't recovered. I used my demon's eye to steal a glimpse of her soul's color. Her life energy had clearly been declining ever since that day, and there were no signs of recovery. It's all my fault. I should have noticed the condition her soul was in earlier. What the hell am I doing? I got carried away indulging myself in pointless love affairs. Why couldn't I just stay focused on my own goals? I've been mimicking humans this whole time, and looking at her with human eyes. I never noticed the subtle change in her. It was the kind of anomaly I would have detected immediately if I'd made use of my demonic abilities. But I wasn't able to do that. 
All because of my selfish desire to pretend to be a human while she was around. But there's no point in pretending anymore, is there? You were so sexy in your demon form, I'm just saying. I've done enough damage, but there's no turning back the clock. I've sinned enough to be considered a greater demon at this point. How can I help her get better? I thought that if I left, that would take care of it. But in the end, even that failed. I'm completely worthless. Nothing has changed since the time she was in college. I should have put more effort into getting Gil to get closer to her. I just couldn't do it. I always felt like I was too tainted to be near her. So sometimes I would manipulate others to make the two of them become closer. I sent incidents in motion hoping they'd force the two of them into each other's arms. But nothing happened. She was tougher than I thought. She clearly had no interest in falling in love. So time went by and nothing changed. And now, the end has come. So you wonder, though, if in all the other routes, right, our necklace falls off, and I think in one of them it's like, oh, yep, it went back to thing. We know what happened in Raul's route, but do you think that, like, Alan ever got... I, I would assume not. He didn't get the Cupid's bow in any other route because... I feel like whatever, when our Cupid's bell falls off, if he gets a hold of it now, we'll know what would have happened. And like, I don't think it's going to be calamity. I think he, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to find out who you really were, Alan. You were the original Cupid or one of the 85th one or something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But it's not going to be like when Minerva got her hands on it and like all hell broke loose, quite literally. Even though Alan is the demon and could make all hell break loose, it still won't be, like, with Minerva. <laughs> Normally there'd be more time even after the effects of Cupid's arrow expired. But I feasted on her power too much. I got too close to her. So now we're all out of time. She should have had another 400 years. Instead, it's all about to end. And the arrow will wear off in three days. And when the time comes... I'll have to enact my final plan. I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but I have no other choice. If I want to kill a goddess... <gasps> but you were trying to just get the necklace to fall off, you weren't going to kill me. So I feel like we're not the goddess he's talking about. A few days later... You know what I mean? Because that seems too much like, wait, you want to kill us? I don't think he wants our necklace because maybe it would kill another goddess. You know what I mean? Type of a thing. Not us. Because otherwise, if he was like, oh, if I'm going to kill her, he would have just stayed around us and sucked our soldier until we died. But he's avoiding us because he doesn't want that to happen. So then why would he steal our necklace and kill us? I'm just saying... Unless this is like the, this is plan Z! Fuck! I really hoped we wouldn't get here, but this is the last option. So, but I don't necessarily believe he was going to try to kill us. I feel like that would have been too easy for him to do. And, and again, he wouldn't be avoiding us, you know? Anyway. Hmm, I think I might be feeling better. I did a quick evaluation after I finished the breakfast that Gil had made for me. I'm so glad. You look much better now. Thanks. I think I'll probably be able to head back to work tomorrow. You have a meeting today, right? Don't worry about me. Oh, why, yes, but I am worried about leaving you alone. I'm okay, I promise. You saw me devouring breakfast, right? And I got leftovers for lunch if I get hungry. I'll take it easy today, I promise, okay? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, well then, I guess I'll be going then. I'll return by dinner, though. My toes were crossed, Gil. Okay, have a good day. Despite my reassurances, he couldn't stop himself from checking the fridge to make sure. But finally, he managed to get out the door. I couldn't help but sigh at his constant need to fawn over me. I wish he'd relax once in a while. I probably could have gone into work, but since I'd had a fever the night before, I decided to call in sick just to be safe. After collapsing at work, it's only natural everyone's worried about me. But all I wanted was to get back to work. As long as I was stuck at home, I couldn't stop myself from thinking about Alan. I wonder what he's doing right now. He didn't come to see me once the entire five days I was sick. I thought maybe he'd stop by while I was sleeping, but when I asked Gil, he said we hadn't had any visitors. I guess he must be really busy. I touched my Cupid's bow pendant. 
The arrow's influence is set to wear off today. I imagine it'll happen tonight at the same time that I shot it originally. All I wanted was to be with Alan when that moment came. I wanted to know if my feelings would really change. And if my love for him did still remain, I wanted to be able to tell him so. At that moment, the doorbell rang. I thought it might be Gil, so I opened the door, and my heart leapt up into my throat. It's Alan. Standing before me was my one true love. A Alan? Hey, how are you feeling? Much better now. I'm glad you came by. I hugged him and breathed in the scent of the one I loved. It was the scent of a, of a man. The scent of a man. The scent of my first. Like you remember that shit? That's okay. I guess you look okay. Yeah, I pretty much just slept for five days straight, so I'm okay now. I took today off just in case. Alan? I tried to assure him I was fine, but he didn't seem to believe me. This is where you tell us the truth, Alan. He probably thinks I'm still sick and I'm just trying to hide it. Really, you don't have to worry about me. I'm sure I'll be able to head back to work tomorrow. I see. In that case, do you think you'd be able to leave the house today? You want me to? I do. And the effect wears off tonight, right? I was hoping we could go on one last date. One last date, because the arrow's effects will disappear tonight. Alan obviously hadn't forgotten exactly how much time we had left. In that moment, I kind of wish he had forgotten. That way, maybe I could convince myself that the effect wasn't gone. I thought that if I continued to love him even after today, he could keep feeding on my dreams. But he remembered, which meant our love would come to an end that night. Alan, thank you. I'd like nothing more than to go around the city with you. If today's all we have left, then I want to see all of Los York. All of Los York? In that case, I should go get my car. No, I'd rather go on a bike ride together. But you just got over being sick. Maybe, but if this is our last date together, I don't want anything to hold us back. I want to see all your expressions and reactions that I've missed these past 30 days. After all, this might be our last day together, right? I really did want to see as much of the city with him as I could. I held his gaze, and after a moment, he gave a small nod. Okay, and that's what my darling wants. <laughs> we rented a pair of bicycles and began our journey around Los York. Besides, with gas at the price it is, Alan, Jesus, can't afford to drive a car. First off, the museum. We'd never actually been to the museum together. We parked our bikes and went inside. The last time I was here was with Raoul. I felt like I'd probably have a different experience this time. <laughs> Slightly. So this is what the inside of a museum looks like. It feels almost... sacred. And there are paintings of all different kinds of gods. <laughs> Look! There's a painting of a demon! It seems to be a pretty popular theme for humans. Maybe there's a painting of you! I highly doubt that. Oh! Look at that! It's that painting by Botic Botticelli. Not Botticelli. Botticelli. <laughs> Doesn't mom look amazing? Hmm. There's also a painting of you. Naked. It's baby. What? <laughs> it doesn't really look like you, though. Your legs are longer and you have way bigger... You also are a woman. <laughs> uh, not so loud! You're embarrassing me. <laughs> We talked about silly everyday things and wandering through the museum just like any other couple and wandered through the museum just like any other couple. That makes more sense. There were paintings of terrifying demons and divine gods. There were also paintings of humans and beautiful landscapes. Together we took them all in. After enjoying everything the museum had to offer, we went to Lost York Park in search of food. In the park we bought lunch from a hot dog cart. After we finished, we found a stand selling bubble tea, so we each got a cup. Mmm, so good! <laughs> I can't believe you were the one to suggest bubble tea. You must really love it now. I'm glad you have your appetite back, but are you sure you're okay? I'm not feeling sick to your stomach. Let me know 
if you start feeling sick again. <laughs> I'm fine, I swear. But thank you for worrying about me. Besides, this is your favorite, right? I just wanted to enjoy some, t uh, some together with you. It's kind of sour, but I like it. All right. I'm glad you've come to enjoy the sourness. Actually, bubble tea is really sweet. But I didn't feel the need to tell him that. It was enough for me to have a secret about him that only I knew about. I saw it as proof that I was the only one who really understood him, so I decided not to correct him. After all, we're in love, right? It's only natural to want to keep all your lover's secrets to yourself, right? I mean, you shouldn't spill your lover's secrets to everyone else. That's rude. It's not your secret to tell. Unless it's something that's harmful to them or other people. <laughs> then those secrets are okay to tell. As we finished our bubble tea, we came to the main stretch of 7th Avenue. We noticed a furniture store and prattled on like a couple of newlyweds. Hey, you mind if we check this place out? Hmm? This one here? Yeah, and don't you think that eagle lamp would be perfect for my place? You think so? But don't you already have an eagle lamp, or some kind of bird lamp at least? Oh, that one's a flamingo. It's actually a little too bright, so I've been on the lookout for something a little more subdued. Ah, I see. But the flamingo lamp is so cute. Everything gets all pink when you turn it on. Maybe you could put them together. I think that'd be super adorable. Wouldn't that be too bright, though? You'd probably have a hard time falling asleep. Oh. Realizing what he was saying, Alan just looked at me. The effects would wear off today, so we wouldn't be spending any more nights together. Er, yeah, I think you're right. I think we'd be really cute together. I don't want to carry it around, so I'll come back another time. Um, why don't we go check out that jewelry store over there? Y yeah, let's go. I was hoping to stop in there myself. Maybe I can find something that looks good on me. We both stuff our feelings down and just went on as if we were a normal, happy couple. But the moment when we couldn't pretend anymore was fast approaching. We realized that discussion of any possible future together was off limits. I wish I could just sleep in Alan's room tonight, tomorrow night, and the night after that. That's what I wanted to say, but I'd much rather express those feelings in a more romantic situation. So I bid farewell to the eagle in my heart, and we, and we walked on. <laughs> I bid farewell to the eagle in my heart! <laughs> I love that line so much. It's so cheesy. Alan mentioned me falling asleep without thinking because I'd gotten used to falling asleep in his bed every night. But that wasn't going to happen anymore, so we had to swallow his words. And in doing that, I could feel his compassion for me. I truly love him. I love that his kindness toward me came so naturally. Little moments like this are how shared histories are built. But I, but I knew it just meant that tonight would be even more painful. Alan, if I tell you that I love you tonight, will you believe me? Will we become true lovers? <laughs> Who knows? After all that, we arrived at the local amusement park. I couldn't help asking to come here. I'd always wanted to visit an amusement park with someone I liked. The House of Constantine. Or the Haunted Manor. Haunted Manor. Do we get to choose? Hmm. Grab a shotgun and take out all the quarter breeze demons before they reach you. A shooting game, huh? I've never heard of a demon called quarter breeze, though. <laughs> so we get to fight a bunch of demons that not even a fellow demon has heard of? Isn't that exciting? Let's try it. Are you sure you're okay with scary stuff like this? Sure, as long as I've got you by my side. True, I guess there's not much to be afraid of when you've got a literal demon by your side. We kept joking around with each other as we checked out the other attractions. But even while we were having fun, he still kept asking if I was okay and made sure to take lots of breaks while we walked. Here, I got you some juice. Do you want to take a break? Thank you, Alan, but we already took a break earlier, so I'm fine to keep going. Well, humans are supposed to like salty food, right? But why don't we go get some popcorn? Uh, but maybe that's too much food. We already had bubble tea. Hmm, but that was like three hours ago. How often do humans get hungry? What about you? Are you hungry? Listen, Mom. <laughs> You're starting to act like Gil. It's fine. I'm feeling really good right now. 
Maybe, but I can't help it. I feel like you might disappear at any second. Don't worry too much. I'm not going to just suddenly take off back to Celestia out of nowhere. Alan had been holding my hand tight the entire time, as though he might lose me the instant he let go. Hey, let's go ride that roller coaster. I've always wanted to give it a try. Yeah, someone that got dizzy in the last five days and has been sleeping. Roller coaster, good idea. Without warning, I felt my legs start to buckle. I was about to collapse. Are you okay? Whew, sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. I just felt faint all of a sudden. Alan looking at us like, didn't I fucking just ask if you were okay? I'm just kidding. Alan pulled me to him tightly, his lips a thin line of worry. You're so warm. So are you. I buried my head in his chest and heard him let out a pained sigh. Is this really it? Huh? N nothing. Uh, never mind. Listen, oh, why don't we skip the roller coaster and go find a cafe to sit down at instead? What? Come on, I'm fine. She passes out. You nearly collapsed. You really shouldn't push yourself so hard. Come on, let's go. You can be like, we can come back another time. Yeah, another time. We know there'll never be another time, but sometimes just promising next time. Alan took my hand and led me away. Why is he being so overprotective today? The whole time I was sick and sleeping it off, he never came to see me once. He watched you from the window on the rooftop. He should just tell you that. I was peeping through your window. It's fine. <laughs> we arrived at the beach just as the sun started to set. Oh. We returned our bikes to the rental shop and strolled down the beach, hand in hand. We didn't have a destination in mind. We were just walking. The sand felt nice beneath my feet, but it also made me a little sad. The sunset's so beautiful. Yeah. I had an amazing time today. Thank you, Alan. I'm glad to hear that. His hand gripped mine even tighter. His warmth pierced my heart. Sunset, which means it's almost time for Cupid's arrow to wear off. I had an early shift that day, so I would have shot the arrow around 7.30 p.m., when night falls and the time comes, I'll turn back into a Cupid that doesn't know love. How am I going to feel about him once the arrow's influence disappears? I'm terrified of finding out. I wish that time never had to come. That's why I'm talking to him as if I've forgotten. I just want to tell him to forget all of it and keep going the way we have been. So, Ellen, what do you want to eat tonight? What? For dinner? Yeah, let's eat somewhere really amazing. Like hamburgers, or fried chicken, or a nice thick steak sounds good too, don't you think? <laughs> you want something with some substance, huh? Since I've just been eating sick food the last few days, I want something that'll give me some real energy. I see. Well then, let's get something that'll make you as happy as possible. I could hear a slight tremble in his voice. It was telling me that the moment would never come. I couldn't think of anything to say in response. I couldn't keep pretending. Maybe because our time was so short now, anything we said about the future seemed to carry that much more weight. Maybe he thinks that as soon as the arrow wears off, I'll vanish from his side. This is like kind of like heavy and sad because you're like, the moment's going to wear off. And you're like, it's like two people and like, we're talking about the future, but I know you're not going to make it to the future spacey because you're going to die. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, the arrow's wearing off, but it's such a heavy, like, we're dying moment. <laughs> this is some, like, rom-com movie. Well, it's like a drama. But, like, we're like, oh, the characters fall in love and you want to be so happy for them, but one of them is dying. <laughs> like, like, damn game, Jesus. Slap us in the face with this shit. I'm sure it's all good. It's all going to be fine. Come on, but. But they're really good at making you're like, this is so dramatically heavy. <laughs> I should make a proper declaration of love. I should tell him that even after the arrow's influence is gone, I won't ever stop loving him. I glanced up at the horizon and saw a warm, wistful sunset staring back at me. For some strange reason, seeing that made my chest tighten up. It reminded me of better times. Times I wish I could return to. I feel like I've seen something like this before when I was with... 
blank. Huh. Ow. The odd vision that had just shot through my mind left me with a sudden splitting headache. See, I'm just saying, he's like releasing something. What was that? The place I just saw. Where was it? A memory of a place I didn't recognize at all. And then a feeling that I'd forgotten about someone. Someone important. Yeah, Cupid. The person that you're with. I'm just, I'm throwing that out there because I think that'd be kind of awesome. A person close to me. A person that had always been by my side. Speezy. Alan had stopped walking and he pulled me close to him. I turned to him and he was bathed in the light of the sunset. Ooh, see? Huh? For a split second, I thought I saw another person layered on top of him. And in that moment... What? We're dead! Oh, no, Alan. <gasps> Did Alan actually stab us? I can't... I actually wasn't thinking that was gonna happen. Huh. Alright. I feel like there's a reason for this. And it's not, oh, I just wanted to kill you. There's some other, like, this is interesting. Okay, so, thanks. Thanks for that, CG. Okay, all right. My breath catches in my throat, and a burning sensation spreads throughout my body. You could have just kissed us to death. I mean, seriously, you didn't have to stab us. You were tainting our soul. Oh, unless, unless. He was like, I'm tainting her soul. She's going to be fallen. I can't make her fall, so I'll stab her instead. Okay. Someone had to stab us, didn't they? It's like, I should have, I guess we should have seen this coming. Should have seen it coming. Someone was bound to stab us. And you know, Ellen did seem like the most likely suspect. So, yeah, I'm not too shocked about this. He also did say he was going to kill us. But I was like, what? No, he's not going to kill. He can't possibly be me we're talking about, right? Because he's in love with us. But it may be, maybe I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. It's fine. You stabbed me. It's all right, sweetie. We're fine. We'll be okay. I'll get over it. Just buy me something nice or something. I was like, whatever, nice romantic evening or something. Just not like this romantic evening. You know what? Just I, two days worth of space. We'll be fine. Um, But he did say, like, because you're like, he's not killing us. It's, he's killing us as opposed to our soul isn't getting better and he tainted us and we're gonna, and he doesn't want us to become one of the fallen, like become like him. That's kind of what it almost sounded like. So what is his option? God damn it. I'm sorry, bird. It's just the remote. I just kicked it with my foot. You're fine, buddy. Um, so instead of that happening, he decided to kill us. Ah, okay, sure. A violent surge of pain and loss comes flooding out of me. I feel something within my chest, something that shouldn't be there. I'm too afraid to look down and see what it is. But I can't ignore such an alien sensation. I look down. There's a knife sticking out of my chest. I'm sorry. I had no other choice. W why? It's a demonic artifact. It's designed to consume souls. Ellen's eyes are glowing as if in a dream. They look as if they're about to cry. I'm so, so sorry. I took your powers from you. I'm a demon and you're a goddess. I like growing closer to me. You shortened your lifespan to just one year. My life? I was going to die next year? That's what I want to ask him, but I'm unable to form the words. If you continue on his cupid, your soul will eventually disappear. Which is why... He pushes the knife further into me. A bizarre pain I've never felt before courses through my body. Well, I mean, you've never been stabbed in the chest before, so it makes sense. I had to do this. I'm sorry. A kiss while being stabbed. With the knife still between us, Ellen pulls me to him and kisses me. The kindest, the cruelest kiss you could possibly imagine. I'm sorry. Blank. I'm so sorry. I feel like that's where it's Psyche and Cupid. He knows who we are. See? He didn't call Spacey. I know he said a name, but I can't hear it. Rain begins to fall. It's not Spacey. No, not rain. It's his tears. It's the first time I've ever seen Alan cry. He'd always had a sad, lonely look in his eyes. But he'd never shown any real emotion in front of me. 
which is kind of interesting if that's the case, because it almost makes it seem like, okay, like Alan and they're like the end all, but then Jupiter's the end all be all route, which is weird. So I could never tell what he was really thinking. After the arrow's effects had worn off, I had so many questions I wanted to ask him, so many thoughts and feelings to share with him. And now here he is, crying. But I can't speak to him anymore. I can't even breathe. Alan, why did you always look at me with such sadness? Why did we become lovers? Was it purely an accident? Why did you say my soul would disappear? Why wouldn't you ever say anything to me before now? My mind's fading. The world is turning black. No, you're just going to turn into a real human. I can't move my fingers. My breath has gone still. It's time to say goodbye, but the words are beyond me now. Alan. Hey, Alan. Did we meet somewhere once before? Yes, because he called us some other name and we were going to... I'm telling you, that's just what I feel. And if it's someone else, it just wouldn't make sense. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it would make more sense if he was the original Cupid and we were Psyche and like whatever. No end to our journey. It's a little under time, but I'm going to stop here just because... Oh! No, I'm actually going to stop here, though, in the middle of this, because I know we can, so... Love is the fr fruit of the flower! Anyway, um... Yeah, so I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more!